Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday morning trading session. Hold on here one second while I get you my monitor. Uh, the market just opened up, and it looks like it's opened up a little bit stronger than where it left off the day before. If we take a look here at the Eagle, for instance, you can see the overnight has had a fairly substantial rally right out of the London Open. We've got a nice red bar buy signal right here. And prices never really looked back. Actually, about an hour ago, we got another red bar buy. And here we are. So it remains to be seen whether or not uh, the market's going to try to fill this great big gap that is down here or whether it's just going to keep on pushing from where it is now. So we'll have to keep a lookout for that. Uh, we do have technically a rule of three signal here where we've got one, two, three signals against the hard edge. Haven't had much of a test of the extreme. So if you're going to try this rule of three, I would probably suggest that you try to take it below the lows here. You can see we're currently against our ATR. That's our average true range. Okay, so we've just flipped over on it. I'm going to demonstrate this rule of three signal for you. However, like I said, it's a little bit risky right now. The markets have just opened up. We should at least, you know, allow the market five or ten minutes to get its bearings. And you can see we are coming back with a with trend signal now. So I'm going to cancel that rule of three signal just at the moment. But the what makes the rule of three the rule of three is that you're producing, this is on the eagle now. So for those of you who have the eagle trend trader, you're producing signals against the dominant trend. Right now the dominant trend is bullish as outlined by our band, but we keep producing sell signals. Now you can make the argument that we're also producing buy signals. In fact, maybe the thing to do is use an OCO order here and just look to buy above and sell below. Now whenever I use the OCO order, I also tend to place the orders away and then pull them in because the OCO is live the moment you put it on your chart. So you could identify this just as a sideways trading range also and just let the market engage you whichever way it chooses. The all important thing with the rule of three, however, before I leave that subject, is not just the fact that we're producing three or four signals against the hard edge, but the rule of three always needs to be preceded by a test of the extreme. In this case, we're looking for a retest of the highs, a subsequent failure, and the market to tail off from there. But right now, this is a little bit more risky. I'm only showing you the OCO order here. This is not necessarily a trade. I would be too keen to take, oops, and what happened there? Did my OCO cancel because I didn't have a stop in? Hmm. Well, it looks like now we are going to get our test of the extreme. And the thing with breakout trades, the point I was going to make is um, I'm never really anxious to take a breakout trade because you never really know uh, how far the market's going to break out. In this case, it looks like we would have done all right. It looks like the breakout is going to stick. But most breakouts, I think it's like three quarters of all breakouts tend to fail. So the market may just break out and then reverse on itself right away. That's what makes breakouts trading breakouts a little riskier. Looks like the Falcon here gave us a 
pretty good looking signal out of the open. Nice little trend change signal after all this sideways waffling. We got the trend change, so the trend line changes color. Here's the up, here's the down, here's the up. The trend change signal, a high probability signal with the uh, Falcon, and you can see that had some decent follow through to it also. As well as we had all this support off of the uh, support line down here. So it's still a little early. Um, right now it does look like the market is a little bit more bullish. But we'll, we'll see how this shapes out. Very little structure here at the moment. Sorry, I was looking at my other charts. I see we also had a, a very late first micro macro cross, but it also looks as though it's found its profit objective. And it's looking very much like we are in a bull market today. All right, so they're starting to slow their rally somewhat. We might see a, uh, a retest here of sorts of the lows. Perhaps uh, a second chance to get in. I would certainly welcome a retracement, say, here to the hard edge. Uh, on the Eagle or even the Raptor. Got a little bit of a consolidation going on now on our Hawk.
All right, so um, interesting scenario here on the uh, on the hawk where we've kind of combined a uh, four arrow consolidation and a macro pullback, and it's trying to run away on me here now. Just before I could point it out to you, of course the highs here are problematic. And you might want to consider dialing down the risk because the market's obviously going a little bit sideways. In fact, we're getting another channel, much smaller channel than what we started the day with, but a channel nonetheless. And we're also getting a late filter entry signal here on our Falcon, which is also... Um, a pretty strong looking signal but because of the range I'd be inclined to take it above the high perhaps cover below the low look at that nice move though right from one resistance line to the other almost hit it right on the number two Absolutely, Tony's saying. Can you pull over the crude oil hawk for a second? Here we go. Here's crude oil. Now, uh, Tony just posted that, so I'm thinking he's referring to this macro pullback signal. Yes, that is, in fact, a bona fide macro pullback. Crude oil in a little bit of an uptrend, however. You see that? Whenever you have a market which has a defined trend, you should be a little bit leery going counter trend. And it looks as though it's respecting this trend line pretty well. Oh, we got a nice little break though. Um when you see a break of a trend line like this, however, you can always anticipate one more push higher. So it's hard to say right now whether this was the last push higher or if, if there's one more to come. But no, Tony, that's definitely a macro pullback signal that you have here. This green bar cell worked out really well. That was a little bit uh, easier to take maybe because there was no test of the extreme. Right, so when this green bar cell prints, that's our test of the extreme. And so now you can say, all right, I can try to take it lower now that we've retested the highs. And in fact, it had some pretty good follow through. All right, let's see if we can pick up on a trade here. Ryman's asking, on the NASDAQ, what is the tick value compared to the E-mini, the ES? The ES trades at 12.50 a tick. The NASDAQ and the mini Dow, that would be the YM, both trade at $5 a tick. That's the primary reason I like the NASDAQ and the mini Dow compared to the E-mini. Because... Um, well, dollar for dollar, I can get more contracts in play, anywhere from two to three times as many contracts using the NASDAQ or the mini Dow as compared to the E-mini. Now, why is that important, you say? Well, what a lot of people don't realize is that the NASDAQ and mini Dow will make the equivalent dollar move that the E-mini will make most times. So just as, for instance, let's say, the E-mini makes a $200 move, the NASDAQ will also make a $200 move. 
So it's not like because the E mini is, you know, two and a half times the value, it's going to make two and a half times the move. In other words, if the NASDAQ makes a $200 move, that does not mean that the E-mini is going to make two and a half times that move or a $500 move. What happens is most times the E-mini will also just make a $200 move. Now we're using rough figures here, right? The E-mini may actually go $300. But the point is, if I can take two contracts even uh, on that $200 move, I will have made $400 with the NASDAQ. And even if the E-mini went $250 or $300, I've still made an extra $100. Plus, the nice thing, I think, about using um, a $5 instrument like the Mini Dow or the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ tends to have a little bit more volatility than the Mini Dow, is that uh, by taking multiple contracts, you have more management options. Right? If I'm trading the E-mini, chances are if I'm only taking two or three contracts on the uh, instrument like the NASDAQ, I can probably only take one contract on the E-mini. So that always opens up the issue, okay, so the market has moved in my favor, what do I do now? Do I take profit? Do I try to let it run out? Do I roll my stop to break even and cross my fingers and hope that the market will go higher? What do I do? Right. So with uh, an instrument like the NASDAQ where I may have two or maybe three contracts in play, well, it's easier. If I'm up some profit, I can take profit on one. I can roll my stops to break even. And if the market goes higher, great. The market goes higher. I still have a contract in play. So those are the reasons I prefer the uh, $5 instruments to the, the larger valued uh, E-mini. It's nothing wrong with trading the E-mini. It's certainly one of the world's most popular markets. Uh, probably the world's most popular stock market, stock index. But as far as the small trader goes, I think there's a lot of advantages to be had by following something like the mini Dow or the, the NASDAQ. All right, so we're still pushing here, and oh, our macro pullback trade got spoiled by this yellow bar. Oh, in fact, that was also our four, one, two, three, four, oh, our four, fourth arrow printed right here, so you could be long. Sorry, I'm a little bit late on some of these signals here today. So you can see the market just made a nice little hop up off of this four arrow slash mackerel pullback here on the hawk. They're just giving her what for today. Hey, well, somewhere through here, I'm still holding out for a little bit of a profit-taking move. I'm doing my best not to get too anxious. Also taking a look at gold, I see gold just made a a decent move lower. Here's gold on the Eagle now. And price is obviously in a downtrend. Uh, this is where gold opened, right about here. Came out with a green bar sell, which is a high probability signal for us. You can see you took a little bit of heat on this trade. Again, why I don't like to place my stops overly tight if I can help it because even though you're right on this trade you would have got stopped right here before prices continued lower so if you didn't take that first green bar sell or if you happen to get stopped out on it you did get a second chance on the green bar sell and that one had a 
pretty good follow through on it. And that's where we're at right now. So it's looking a lot like gold, perhaps in a little bit of a downtrend this morning. Today seems to be opposite day, opposite to what was going on yesterday anyway. Oh, way to go, Tony. Tony says he got lucky on that last rally on the NQ. Ten ticks with four contracts. Nicely done, Tony. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking the same that um, we're kind of running out of steam here a little bit. And you can see that by looking at your... Uh, chart also. I'm just looking here on the Hawk. No particular reason. You can see the same thing on the other charts too. But you see how we started so strong, you know, taking off like a rocket ship. Now all of a sudden we're going sideways. Another rally, but the leg is much shorter than it was back here. Kind of a little bit of sideways pullback action. Here's yet another leg shorter still. So it does look like the momentum is waning. I think we're going to see a little bit of a possible pullback here in a second. Flashing another red bar by there. Our trend line has flipped over now on the Falcon, so we have the beginnings of a trend change signal there. the crude oil macro pullback signal that we were looking at a little bit earlier, this one right here, developed into a green bar cell and it looks like it's finally traded low enough to find its profit objective. Again, a good example of why you don't want to, you know, place your trades overly tight. You, the trade worked out, but had you had your stops too tight, you would have been stopped out before you could get to your profit objective. All right, so do we have a test of the extreme yet? Kind of, sort of, maybe. Not a real clean one. We're getting some sell signals here. So we do have a proper trend change signal now on the Falcon. Oh, and it's kind of flipped on the signal. The problem is I would have to cover it right up here in order to make this, this work. Um, get up there just a little bit for me. Come on. Come on. So I'm going to simulate. Oh, they actually slipped me. I'm going to simulate this order. Um, on the hash mark. Now remember, the danger with this particular trade is no test of the extreme. That's why my stop is way up here. See, here they come. Here comes the test of the extreme. And you don't necessarily need to get in this early, right? Don't ever feel like you're going to miss a trade. Shoot, look at all the trades I missed this morning, right? That's nothing new. You're going to miss trades. Better to get in on a high probability setup and take advantage of that.
Okay, so here come the buyers, and we'll see whether or not they can actually recover the market, or if we're going to get that test to the extreme, and a better opportunity to sell. You can see here now our first micro-macro cross signal. A look at the support that we're getting right here on the hard edge. Same thing here on the Raptor. But that all-important test of the extreme. Once we get that, once we see the market uh, attempt to rally and fail, that makes selling it so much easier. And if we get a decent rally out of this, we might even be able to sell a green bar uh, sell. Now, there's nothing wrong with taking this first micro macro cross. You hear me say all the time, you know, first micro macro cross, very reliable, take it without exception. And you can do that, but like our Falcon trade, we'd have to cover it very, very high here in anticipation of a retracement. So you can see here comes that retracement now. We're into yellow bars. We can cancel that order. Okay, working on a green bar sell. So here we have now the makings of a green bar sell. We still don't know uh, whether this is going to be the test of the extreme, but we can be a little bit more aggressive on this one now. Right? If they fail to take out the high, the market will go lower. And actually, there's lots of room for it to go lower here. I should have uh, put a runner in on this one. And we'll yeah, they're not going to give me a second chance on the runner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to turn the whole trade into a runner. I'll leave my break even in play. And we know my profit target was just below here, around 43.35 half. And admittedly, I'm being a little bit anxious on this trade. Okay, so we've hit the break tr uh, break even trigger. I haven't activated my stops just yet. I'm really trying hard to give this trade a little bit of room to work. Come on, get down there. There. Okay, so now we would have hit our profit objective. The trade is now at break even. I've got the ATR on. Uh, as soon as this bar closes, well, my stop is currently down here. Come on, get down there. There we go. So let's see now whether or not we can retrace um, into that opening range gap. Another first micro macro cross brewing here, by the way. Come on. Come on. A little bit lower. Don't look too far back. Oh, you stinkers. All right. Well, we'll see here in a moment whether we get another chance at this one or whether the buyers are truly going to try to rally this. Um, I kind of neglected my Falcon trade here a little bit. So here with the Falcon also, we've had the test of the extreme or still testing the extreme, looking for the market to perhaps recover and head a little bit lower.
Uh, we can try again here with the uh, hawk. You can see we've now got a red bar by. This, of course, is also open to a counter trend signal. Uh, namely, shorting the failure of it. And this time I'm going to try to uh, have a runner in play on this one. So what I've done is I've sold the red bar buy. You don't have to be anxious about buying and selling the failures of a red bar buy or a green bar sell. Because if the breakout is actually going to hold, you can see we got our first micro macro cross signal right here, right next to it. All right, so come on, don't stop now. <laughs> get down there. This low is the problem. If we can get below this 43.31, there we go. Come on. Come on. Got the buyers trying to buy it up but from here now. The buyers are trying to force this market into a sideways trading range. The sellers, doggone it. The sellers trying to take the market lower from here. Uh, again, you could try to short it below there. This isn't one of our normal signals. Um, you could wait for a macro pullback to develop. As you can tell, I'm a little bit bearish on this current move. Now that it seems as though the market has topped out, I really want to see it uh, head a little bit lower, see if I can't squeak a couple dollars out of this. Come on, get down there. So a lot of a uh, lot of activity here at this forty three thirty one area. Buyers and sellers really, you know, fighting it out. We probably have a comparable trade here on our. On our fel or pardon me, on our Raptor. And uh, on the Raptor, we actually did. We had the uh, soft edge sell right here. Came a little bit late. Uh, this soft edge sell was not because it was did not have a test of the extreme preceding it. This soft edge sell you could have tried because it did have a test of the extreme. And, of course, you'd want to leave your stops further back because it does look like the market is bouncing around a little bit today and then you had the third attempt on at a soft edge cell right here so my attempts to try to capture a bigger move have been thwarted we did pick up a profit here on the falcon trade couple of little profits here on the Hawk and a couple of break-evens. Here they come again. The Raptor giving us a little bit of a crowd, uh, cloud crossover type signal. Uh, this is a type of signal where I would probably take it, you know, below the low. Uh, remember, most breakouts 
fail, so we want to be careful. Actually, what we'll do is I'll just throw one in as a runner. Okay, David's asking about the, the cloud. Why do I have multiple levels on my cloud? I'm going to show you that in just a moment here, David. I'm not going to... Uh, Oh, actually, what I can do is I'll show you on my other Raptor. Hold on. Okay, so okay, so we're currently short on that, and uh, we'll just let it ruminate there for a moment. Okay, so David's saying, well, my Raptor only has one cloud. It looks like yours has three. There's actually just two clouds here. What you're seeing is the overlap. So how did I do that? Well, first, let me uh, give credit where credit is due. Ricardo, one of uh, the Raptor owners, posted his findings at the Raptor Facebook forum. Yes, we have a Raptor Facebook forum. So if you're a Raptor owner or a DTS owner, uh, you can write Adam for the Facebook access. And um, you can. there's lots to read there. The traders are... Uh, sharing their thoughts, showing what's working for them, sharing ideas, just uh, uh, just a great uh, venue. So anyways, what uh, how this developed is Ricardo found that he had, the one band wasn't covering all his trades. What he was focusing on in particular were these hard edge bounces. So what he suggested is running two Raptor clouds, which is what this is. Now to Put two Raptor clouds on your Raptor, or even on your Eagle if you choose to do it. It's really uh, quite simple. What you want to do is you want to go to your indicator panel. And then you're going to pull down here to all these IW tools, and you're going to find IW RTS Raptor Cloud. Double click on that, and you're going to find that you end up with two Raptor clouds in your assortment. Now by default they're both going to have the same settings so what I've done and these are Ricardo's recommendations I know Jim runs something a little bit different I think Jim runs a 6 and an 11 uh, Ricardo was running an 8 and a 12 I believe that's what I'm using is an 8 and a 12 so change one Raptor cloud to 8 change the other to 12. Now here's the tricky part. You need to change your colors. Otherwise, both your bands are going to look the same. So on your colors, just pick whatever color you like. Your band edge, you're also going to have to do the same. You're going to have to change the color so that you can differentiate between the two. And then just click apply and you're done and you will have a multiple cloud. But like I said, the purpose of the multiple cloud was to take advantage of these hard edge bounces. So you see here the Raptor actually drifted, hit the second cloud, came out with a buy signal. This is the type of trade that Ricardo would have been very keen to take. Market comes back, bounces off the second hard edge, and there's another opportunity to take a profit. Now, uh, I think it was Jim, actually, who noticed this the other day, is, um, or the other day, a few months back, is on these cloud crossovers, when the market turns the clouds over, it will retrace into the cloud, and you can anticipate the cloud now to uh, support the market, or in this case, pardon me, resist the market from heading higher. So we might produce a... Uh, sell signal out of this. So something to to keep an eye out for there. All right, so here we're getting a, a little bit of a push now by the uh, buyers. And sorry, I looked away from this one here. Uh, 
do we hit our break even trigger? Ooh, I think we hit our break even stop. And I did not have my stop enabled. Okay, I don't want to get too anxious on the short side here, folks, because um, I think we're the trend definitely up today. So I don't want to get too cute shorting a an uptrend. Kind of getting some mixed signals, though. A little bit more difficult trading today than what we were seeing yesterday. Uh, Bayard's asking, are there two clouds available on the Eagle? If you go to your indicators, now, I have an Eagle cloud. I don't know if that's true for everybody. I have a lot of different things on here. So if you do have the Eagle cloud, you can certainly double click on it and it will add another cloud and you can also adjust the uh, the settings all right so we've got our swing is in come on Come on. I should be getting much more aggressive with this trade. If you're currently short on this one, I'm going to go with the bar high low. I'm not going to give this too much room. There we go. That's all I'm going to give it. Get down. Come on. Come on. Get down there. Oh, you stinkers. No, they're going to tap me here in a second. Unless I get really, really lucky, which I don't usually get really lucky. Yeah, Jim's, Jim's saying, Eric, you might want to draw a trend line across the bottom. And I know what you're saying, my friend. It's uh, We're probably pretty darn close to trend line support. overshot there let's see are we how are we doing here okay so far so good caught a little bit of a break on that swing and now we're going to try to head down here to this 4310 area just broke the support level right here and uh, reaction is anticipated come on no 
there we go. They're going to try to react a little bit too much, but that's all right. It's um, still a profitable trade. I'll take it. Jim says the DAX is still selling off. I might have caught a break here, folks. Sometimes it's helpful to be uh, more lucky than good. Come on, give me one more bar. We'll cover it right there. I'm not gonna I'm gonna lock in that hundred dollars. Get down there now. The bar high low, of course, uh, one of our more aggressive stop strategies. Parabolics, the other one. Where are parabolics at? Yeah, parabolics and bar high low, more or less in the same region at the moment. Come on. If we see somebody tick 4318, she's got a little bit of room to go here. Uh, Paco is asking, Eric, a question on the day ranger that you show on your hawk chart. What are your settings to take as a minimum at the start point at 9.30 a.m.? All right, so let me... Clear that. All right, so what Paco is asking about is the Day Ranger here. That's this tool up here, the top left corner. And it's very helpful for uh, identifying what the average daily range should be. So you can see currently we're trading at 397. Yesterday's range was 383. And it looks like our ranges are expanding a little bit. Our 30 day range at 278, 10 day range 323. Five-day range, 371. So that tells me the market is becoming more volatile and we are seeing bigger ranges as a result. The settings on my day ranger are as such. Um, actually, they're just the default settings. I don't remember changing anything on this. Yeah, they're just the default settings, really. I know very little about how this particular tool works other than it does work. <laughs> it was developed by uh, Omar El Tuki, who is the fellow who uses the DTS to trade the Forex markets. For those of you who are Forex traders, you might be interested to know that yes, DTS does work just fine on Forex trading as well. All right, we've made a fairly substantial pullback relative to where the market opened this morning. Now we're kind of back in no man's land. This is where the buyers rallied the market from. So we'll see whether they can come back here again. Um, Tony, Tony, you're asking me, Eric, when you have a moment, will you show me the data series box on the NQ Hawk? I would like to see how yours is set up. Sure. The data series. There you go. So I'm running a six tick mean Renko bar. And I'm using the dynamic equivolume volume bars from Indicator Warehouse. I've got 50 days loaded. You don't need that many. I only have the 50 days because of the Day Ranger. Day Ranger needs at least 30 days. Actually, I could have just plugged in 31. 
My session template is default 24-5. You can use the 24-7. The only difference is the 24-7 will show you the Sunday morning Globex. The default 24-5 will show you uh, the Monday morning start. And I think that's it. Everything else. Oh, I, I do not plot executions. But everything else should be the default. All right, so you can see from the hawk here quite a bit of confusion, quite a bit of uh, waffling, a lot of yellow bars. A little bit of a range here on the Raptor. Crude oil still slipping lower. <laughs> Tony says he's got some questions. Ask away, Tony. There's not a whole lot going on here at the moment. Um, uh, Michael's asking, Eric, what are those numbers above, below the last bar? This is the logic counter, Mike. And it's standard with DTS. And what it does, because this is a range style bar, the logic counter actually tells me where this bar will finish. So let's say I wanted to enter below the low of the current bar for whatever reason. I know that the low of the current bar will be 43.18.25. So if I wanted to enter below that, I could say place my entry order there. It is a tough market right now, folks. Should have been paying more attention to crude oil. What a ride on crude oil this morning. Here's crude oil on the hawk. So here was the macro pullback that Tony pointed out. The green bar cell that developed shortly after that. that here's that first micro macro cross. After all that, look at that huge move to the downside. Nice, smooth progression. Tony asks, he says, I see you're able to display the logic counter. I talked to Ben, and he said you can't do that. So how is it yours is working with the volume bars? That's, um, that's odd, is what that is. So you've got the logic counter in your indicator assortment? That's all I've done. I haven't done anything special to it. Um, I th there were some minor issues with the dynamic equivolume bars when they first came out. But as, as far as I know, 
those issues have all been resolved. So if by chance you have an early version of the dynamic equivolume bars, Uh, you may want to uh, double check with Ben or just uh, remove it from your Ninja Trader and reinstall it. That works too. Uh, Mike says here, Eric, I just activated the logic counter with the echo volume bars and it works fine. So I don't understand why you would be having an issue with that, Tony. Okay, we got a little bit of a tricky bar here at the moment. Um, where the market is just kind of trying to sort itself out still. Here we are on the Raptor. We've got this sideways trading range that to me looks like something like this. Probably going to break down and leave me out of the trade again, but I don't want to get too excited here jumping in too early. So crude oil looks like they finally put the brakes on. Tony's asking, Eric, how can you predetermine when the ATR line is going to flip over? Well, once the, here, let's roll this back. So this is the current bar. I know if the next bar closes, it will close above the ATR line, and that will cause the ATR line to flip over. So the next bar closed above the ATR flipping the line over. You'll see that happens all the time. Here's the bar that formed just above the ATR. This one closed just below it and it flipped the ATR over. Okay, boys and girls, we're getting a uh, first micro-macro cross now on the hawk. And how deep? 
deep do I need to cover this bad boy? I can try to cover it to there. We already had a soft edge by here on the uh, Raptor with an itty bitty test of the extreme right down here. Okay, so we've hit our first profit target. Now we have a trailing uh, contract in play here on our Eagle, or pardon me, on our Hawk. And I think I'm going to get ready to Let's see what parabolics look like. Yeah, sure, let's go with parabolics. So I'm running a break even. I've got parabolics in to trail my stops. Providing, of course, we see the market continue to rally from here. Come on now, don't look too far back. Oh, you stinkers. Okay, so we're working a trend change signal now on the uh, Falcon or a possible trend change signal. The trend line flipped way back here. Here's the up, here's the down. We'll see if they come back with an up. I'm probably going to guess that that's going to finish somewhere around here. getting a raptor signal too yeah the raptor is also producing a signal so we've got the warning dot anyways it keeps flashing here flashing and disappearing uh, the makings of a cloud crossover Look at this bar, hey? One tick one way, it, we get a buy warning dot. One tick the other way, we get a sell warning dot. Okay, here they come. It's a very interesting one to watch. Like I said, we'll get a comparable signal uh, developing on the Raptor. So if you're a Raptor owner, you, we should get the same kind of thing going on. There we are. Come on, get up there. Oh, don't be like that. Let's go. Come on. 
don't do this at home. <laughs> I meant to set my stop a little bit deeper. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare. You see the signal printed a little bit away from the trend line so the tendency will be for the market to pull back into the trend line and hopefully we're going to come out of here with a late filter entry signal which would be a high probability buy signal for us. The late filter entry signal develops when the trend line does not change color but the filter goes out of sync comes back into sync. No, the trend line has since gone out of sync. Come on, you guys. All right, that's all I'm going to give it. Get up there. Oh, where did the buyers go? Ah, nuts. They're going to tag me here in a moment. Doggone it, it started off as such a nice looking trade. Had everything going for it. What's my Raptor doing? Uh, same thing, we're just kind of folding over on ourselves here. No, it's not going to work. The ideal stop is um, way down here. This is where my stop should have been. I probably couldn't have afforded the trade way back here. Now I've got myself a little heavily invested in this one, but we're going to get tagged here in just a second, as you can see. So, unfortunate that the market did that little reversal on me but we'll try to get that back here in a second Oh, way to go, Tony. Tony's knocking it out of the park here today. Picked up another 20 ticks on a macro pullback here on crude oil. Well done. Well done indeed. Good job, man. Macro pullbacks are uh, very reliable signals.
soul. Okay, uh, we're still fighting our way out here with the uh, with the Falcon. Possibly working on a late filter entry signal to the downside of all things. Now the late filter entry signal, I'm anticipating that if this bar closes down here, it's going to flip the filter over, which is what it will do. I'm also anticipating that it's going to print a hash mark, which it did. So we now have a late filter entry signal to the downside. We also have a trend change signal to the downside. And this is all a little bit more aggressive. Seeing how the market doesn't real have, have any real direction right now. And obviously they weren't keen on going higher. So we'll see whether or not we can take advantage of a move lower. Uh, here on the Raptor also. We have that cloud crossover. We have that support from the cloud. You could also treat this as a trading range. And you could have sold right here. I'm a little bit late on the sell here on the Raptor, but you get the idea. The Raptor and the Falcon tend to coincide on the signals. Okay, back into our uh, support zone. How are we doing for profit here? Okay, about $130. Let's get our parabolics handy. So we have hit the initial profit target. Let's see if we can't um, try to run this a little bit lower. Again, here's the problem, like if this were the E-mini S&P, right? I've got one contract in play. What do I do? Do I take the $130? Do I try to swing it and get a larger move out of the deal? Way to go, David. David also killing it on crude oil. He says, awesome day on crude oil, up $622.50. Nicely done, David. Good job. Okay, this is going to be a huge bar here for uh, the NASDAQ. If we can trade here and take out the low at around 43.12, chances are pretty good. We will see the market continue lower still. However, if, uh, if the market rallies, then we're going to uh, probably see it try to recover the recent high. Okay, so, so far so good. Get my stop going there. Where's the primary resistance? Oh, shoot, we got a ways to go. All right, so if this resistance line holds, next target looks like it's going to be around 42.93 half. That would be a fantastic move. That would certainly be trading into this morning's gap in a big way. Providing we pick up some downside momentum here. Man, they're 
are stubborn around this 4310 area. That's where we started the day. And this is where the buyers started their rally. So 6.30 right here. Right at 43.10, almost on the number. And you can see that's where the buyers dug in. And this is where we're at again. So to be expected that the buyers, once again, going to try to defend that area. Geiger counter fairly even. Oh, we're getting a little bit of buying activity here as the buyers try to chew through some of those orders. Come on, sellers. Look at the width of these bars, too. You can just tell all that activity going on there. All right, so we may have caught a little bit of a break here. Uh, the cloud crossover signal right here. This is the same signal we took on the Falcon, but you can see clouds crossing over. The market retreats back into the clouds. Also a hard edge bounce off of the second cloud, producing a nice little sell signal from there. I missed this as it was printing. I think I must have been focused on my Falcon trade already, but um, a nice green bar sell here on the Eagle. Remember with the Eagle, as soon as the market encounters the hard edge, we anticipate some sort of reaction, and the green bar sell is one of our high probability signals. Okay, you can see parabolics holding me back a little bit here. Parabolics tend to do that as the trend is developing. And then as the trend weakens, the uh, parabolics will hurry up and get you in a little bit tighter. That's the nice thing about the parabolic for a stop strategy is if the market is trending, it does a pretty good job of holding you in for most of that trend. How are we doing here? Oh, not bad. Got about half of that protected with our stop. Here we go, come on. So you can see the stops coming in a little bit tighter now. And it looks like we're gonna get tagged here in a moment. Just maybe. Oh, wow. Look at that. Come on. Take out that low, 4304. Somebody get in there, sell. If we break 4304, 4300 even, seems like a, 
a very probable target. So, all right, well, not a bad little trade. Uh, late filter entry signal, very, very powerful signal. So when you see that develop on your Falcon, you should seriously consider uh, taking it at least, you know, at least throw a single on it if you're a little apprehensive about it. If it, it has a very high probability of, of success. Very good, very good trade. All right, you guys, we're coming up here on the top of the hour. Um, I think we're in for a little bit more chop now that the market has made a fairly substantial retracement. The day is still kind of bullish, though, so don't count the buyers out. We could see another buying opportunity and maybe even a rally back to the highs of the morning, which would see the market trading around 43.44, somewhere in that neighborhood. You can see here already on the Hawk, we're producing green bar cells. Those only tend to happen near the end of a trend. might see a retracement even here into the hard edge. Uh, so 43.20, um, a probable number four for the NASDAQ, if in fact we do see a rally from here. All right, you guys, uh, I'm going to close up the room for today. A uh, reminder that tomorrow, Wednesday, we're going to be meeting at our open house venue. All right, so it's going to be the other trading room. And uh, I'll see you guys then. All right, uh, if you are looking to trade this afternoon, like I said, a rally does not seem out of the realm of possibility. So keep your eyes open. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Bye for now.